All right, to access the Service Cloud Consultant exam guide, go to trailhead.salesforce.com, and then if you click on Credentials, and then select Certifications, they'll take you to the landing page for the various Salesforce roles that are out there. And it defaults to Salesforce Administrator. You'll want to go to Salesforce Consultant in order to find the Service Cloud Consultant certification along with other consultant-related certifications as well. And so then click on Service Cloud Consultant. That takes you to the main page for the Service Cloud Consultant credential. Here's the link for the exam guide. And then there's some notes here about the admin certification being a prerequisite. Some links as far as a trial mix for this particular certification, community links and classes and workshops as well as a schedule now for the actual scheduling of your certification exam. But before all that, you'll want to get the exam guide in order to review the different knowledge areas and learning objectives for this particular exam. Now, the About the Exam link is where you'll find answers to your frequently asked questions, such as the number of questions. There's 60 multiple choice or multiple select questions and up to five non-scored questions and 105 minute duration for the exam, passing score 67%. Here's the registration fee of $200. Retake fee if you fail would be $100. Delivery options are proctored online or on site, meaning that someone's gonna be watching you take the exam and making sure you're not availing yourself any hard copy or online materials. And a prerequisite once again is the admin certification. And here's a note about there being five ungraded questions. And then here, once again, is the trail mix link and other courses that Salesforce provides. And then here we get to the exam outline, the different knowledge areas of the exam. You'll see that there are nine knowledge areas and you can expand each of these to see the different learning objectives. Each bullet point would be considered a learning objective. You will find oftentimes that there's multiple topics represented in a single learning objective or bulleted point. And so there's a lot of topics they will need to master in order to pass or do quite well on the Service Cloud exam. And so I'm going to go ahead and expand all these out here and then we'll talk briefly about most of these learning objectives. I'm, I'm not going to read this word for word but kind of give my own two cents on what I think about this particular certification which I did attain several years ago. There's been a lot of changes to it since I attained it and I'm also working on update to my Service Cloud Consultant course along with all my other certification courses at MikeWheelerMedia.com. Now industry knowledge that is more conceptual in nature and that's one of the challenges with teaching the consultant certifications as well as learning and preparing for the exams is that these industry knowledge things that you'll find in the consultant exam guide such as the service cloud one here have more to do with service industry knowledge and not so much specific to the Salesforce platform. These are things that you can't necessarily learn getting hands on on the platform as far as oh where do I click or what do I do or what app do I launch. This is more about things such as key performance indicators or KPIs. And so you will find yourself needing to learn some various acronyms, especially on the service cloud side of things, such as average hold time, average handle time, and understanding some glossary terms such as case deflection. And so it's not just all baked in the Salesforce platform. There are things outside of the platform that are just industry specific. And that's where you'll find those topics here in the industry knowledge side of things. So you will need to understand what are the factors that influence key contact center metrics, KPIs, and business challenges. And so contact centers are definitely one of the things that you'll need to become familiar with. These would be sometimes referred to as call centers, but it's more than just calls. It can be chat. It can be web-based. Uh, web to case forms being filled in. You really have got to learn a lot about case management as well. And a lot of times that's in the context of a contact center. Now, also you'll need to understand the different interaction channels. Once again, that would be chat, web to case, phone, email, even potentially fax, even though that's fallen out of favor over the past 15 to 20 years. There are still some support areas that deal with faxes even, especially in healthcare, it seems. Now, compare and contrast the different types of contact centers and their business drivers. And so some of the different types of contact centers would be help desk, product support, telesales, service, field service, slash depot, repair. And then we would have business to consumer, that would be B to C, and then business to business, that would be B to B, okay? So more acronyms to be concerned about. And then identify the benefits of a knowledge base, so that would be Salesforce knowledge, that is a topic and a concern that has been removed from the admin exam and makes an appearance here in the Service Cloud Consultant exam. And then next knowledge area would be implementation strategies. This is where you start to do some implementation, but still not a lot of hands-on in Salesforce. This is still a lot of conceptual 
or theory or scenarios that you need to be involved in as far as how to facilitate a consulting engagement. And the different steps of that are typically plan, gather requirements, design, build, test, and then finally document what you've done for that consulting engagement. And then as well, determining the appropriate contact center licensing and deployment strategies. So that accounts for a quarter of the exam waiting, and it's really not so much inside of Salesforce, but more real world tangible concerns for contact centers. Now, once you get out of that, you start to get into the meat of Salesforce as it relates to service cloud specifically. And so we've got our service cloud solution design knowledge area. And so you'll notice as well, given a scenario, given a scenario, given a scenario, this is over and over again. And rest assured that these will be scenario based questions on the exam as well. And given those scenario based questions, you'll need to be able to analyze customer requirements to determine an appropriate solution design considering capabilities, limitations, and design trade-offs. That also, even though there's a lot of words there, it's kind of nebulous and vague as far as, okay, how does that relate to Salesforce and the service cloud? Just know that you will need to have a broad and deep understanding of the service cloud so that you do know what's available and what's possible on the platform, as well as the different limitations and trade-offs between some of those solutions in the service cloud. Now, also key components that contribute to performance optimization within a design and as well understand the use cases and benefits for implementing CTI communities and Salesforce field service so once again here's another acronym CTI means computer telephony integration and you can integrate Salesforce with various CTI systems or dialers where phone calls come in that brings up the contact record on file and you can start a case right there from your phone system and all that can be integrated. So you'll learn more about that as you're studying and preparing for the service cloud exam. Communities, is this kind of out of date actually, it's now known as experiences, not the greatest name in the world, it's kind of vague, or sometimes it's called a digital experience. Prior to that, it was called communities. You can implement communities slash digital experiences slash portals. They were called portals before communities. I think we're soon to see Salesforce rename it something else even again, but I digress. But the point is, is that a community or a portal and a digital experience is a way to extend out your Salesforce instance to customers, to partners, to employees, and they can actually log cases inside of a community portal experience, et cetera. And then field service, uh, used to be called field service lightning. There's a field service certification that's devoted to that, but you start to get a hint of field service here in the service cloud and the field service consultant certification has a prerequisite of both admin and service cloud consultant. All right, so this is the beginnings of field service as well in your, if you're, that's your ultimate path or goal. Now we get into knowledge management. Knowledge was mentioned earlier uh, up here. Identify the benefits of a knowledge base and then to get more specifically you need to understand the knowledge article life cycle including creation, publishing, consumption, and feedback. And that has all to do with creating knowledge articles and you also need to determine how to manage knowledge adoption and maintenance. That's where you'll start to get into article record types as well. So there's a lot about knowledge, of course, in the knowledge management knowledge area. And so you need to configure data categories, article record types, articles and publishing workflow, and then understanding key factors when implementing a knowledge data migration strategy. So you can mass import knowledge articles. There's a lot of formatting and work involved in order for that to happen. But if you've got online help system or a knowledge base in a different system, you can export out of there format and massage the data, get make sure all the fields are correct, data is cleaned up, then you can mass import your knowledge articles. And then as well, when migrating from knowledge to lightning knowledge, lightning knowledge is the newer version of knowledge and there's some things you gotta do to update that. Now, once you get out of knowledge, you get into interaction channels and we've mentioned those different interaction channels before. Here they have experience cloud sites instead of the older terminology of community. And so you want to describe the use cases and functionality for each interaction channel, for example, digital experience, cloud sites, mobile, phone, email, web, chat, and social media. Those are all different ways that a customer, whether it be B2B or B2C, ways that they can interact with you and introduce cases into your org and how they would reach out. So you need to have a presence and ability uh, for your customers to be able to be provided with exceptional support through these different channels is the idea here. 
And then given the business process requirements, determine the appropriate approach to case submission. And that's where you're starting to get into email to case, web to case, those sorts of things. And then other design considerations around the user interface, profiles, and more. Long list here. And once again, the interaction channel solutions such as mobile phone, email, web chat, and social media. I think it's a good idea for you not only to learn about the interaction channels from the Salesforce side, but from the end user side as well. So the more you can do of setting this up on the Salesforce side and then exposing it publicly, at least for yourself to try out, to see how it works on both sides of the fence would be helpful, as well as just interaction channels in general online. Just getting more familiar with contacting support centers and trying to relate what the other person on the into the line or through the chat or whatever it may be, what would be helpful tools for them, and then imagining what that would be like to set that up in Salesforce. Now we're getting into case management. This is really what I consider the main story when it comes to the Service Cloud consultant exam. If our story is to be told here, this would be the central character, case management, the case object. Some call this trouble tickets. But in Salesforce parlance, we're dealing with the case object and proper case management has to do with providing solutions from case creation to closure, including case assignment, case escalation, case resolution, and case disposition. All right. Now, once again, we need to understand the relationships between cases and other areas such as, and these would be various entities or objects or features inside of Salesforce, such as assets, entitlements, work orders, experience cloud sites. So I see that they're referring to experience instead of community here as well chat and knowledge. Now, one thing about knowledge, I didn't mention this when we were back up in the knowledge management side, but earlier in this video, I made mention of case deflection. The idea of case deflection is trying to deflect potential cases from being created by providing a knowledge base that users can search on. And oftentimes when someone tries to log a case online, and maybe you've experienced this as well, you go in to fill in the information around your problem and they bring up some knowledge articles and links to these different knowledge articles and say, does this answer your problem? Hoping that it does. If yes, then they've deflected the case. Case deflection is successful. Don't have to involve a human. If they answer no, then that's where you typically will engage either a chat agent or a phone call or an email or a case being created. So that's what case deflection has to do with. And you may see that on the exam, that verbiage. And so that's what that's about. And so I would add case deflection here if it were up to me just to let uh, students know, okay, you need to understand what case deflection even is, all right? So now beyond the knowledge piece also reoccurring here, we have the acronym once again for key performance indicators and given a set of those KPIs determine the appropriate case management solution. And that kind of goes hand in hand then with service entitlements and milestones in Salesforce, meaning what are my customers entitled to if they have like silver, gold, or platinum support levels. If it's a platinum customer, then we may need to resolve their case within an hour. If they are bronze level, low level support or no support, then perhaps they can only do chat but not phone call and 24 hour return time or something like that, lower level of entitlement. All right. Now, use cases, capabilities, and limitations of service cloud automation. This would be things such as Salesforce Flow, Quick Actions, Macros, and Quick Text. Macros and Quick Text are two cool things that you can do in Salesforce so that some of the repetitive things are made easier for your reps in Salesforce. Keystroke macros that can do certain things as well as Quick Text if there's commonly typed in things that they don't want to type in over and over. You can create quick text for that. And then as well, there's a social component for customer service. And so you need to learn about that as well for customer service so that you can deal with case management from the social media side of things. Now, getting into other things related to contact centers, there would be analytics. And this is where you get into even more acronyms. So it's a good idea for you to Google these and look these up. And it's all about giving a desired set of metrics to determine the appropriate reporting solution taking into account data sources, data volume, and various contact center technologies such as ACD, IVR, PBX, etc. All right. And so then given a scenario, evaluate the considerations when designing reports and dashboards to serve different stakeholders such as agents, supervisors, managers, and executives. I think that call center analytics is really one that tends to roll up 
the org chart oftentimes and those on the floor answering phones may have certain visibility, number of cases in the queue, that sort of thing. But then managers want to know things such as the average call time, the number of calls on average before a case is resolved, the number of touches. And so here is where not only do you need to be familiar with reports and dashboards in Salesforce, but also the acronyms and the mechanisms of contact centers. It might not hurt for you to actually study other resources related to just contact center setup, not specific to Salesforce, but just in general. And if you work in a call center, that gives you an advantage. If you know someone that does, you could kind of pick their brain as well. Now we're getting into the final pieces here, integration and data management. This would be the use cases and considerations for common service cloud integrations. Some of those integrations would be to do with different dialers or phone systems, CTI integration. Those would be considered common, I would think, as well as data migration and data quality as well. And so integration data management, small percentage point there. And then finally, the service console, and this would have to do with console applications. You can do console applications beyond just service console. But this is one of the more common areas that you will see console apps created and used out there in the real world would be the service console. So you'll need to understand what you can do with the console apps. I encourage you to create some of those, get hands-on with service console, do some customizations, see what that's all about. And then kind of the general things here about features work together to deliver business value in the service console, as well as given a set of business requirements to describe how a feature should be implemented, kind of vague. So really just, it's all about service console though. And there's a lot of different things you can customize and do inside the service console uh, as well. So then beyond that, to round things out, the exam candidate code of conduct, what they would like for you to do and not do as a credential holder in general, and then finally maintaining your certification as far as maintenance requirements. So if you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below for what you'd like to learn about Salesforce, and I might just make it my next video. Until then, I'll see you in the cloud.